We are at Chocolate Chocolate, the factory outlet on the hill. Boy, everything smells great. What would you like? Chocolate covered raisins. <laughs> Got it. Yes, let's go on this. <laughs> Thank you. What do you think of the chocolate, Ed Brown? Delicious. Mm. Some of the best chocolate I've ever had. Chocolate, chocolate in the bag. <laughs> soon in our mouths and soon in our stomachs. Right. That's it. Because well, we're at chocolate, chocolate. Very good chocolate. Make the trip down here, take a tour, and eat some good chocolate. There's nothing better. These are chocolate covered raisins. Oh, yummy, that's, yummy. That's your favorite, isn't it? Yes, it is. And Ed Brown, what's your favorite? Malted milk balls. Well, that's what you have. That's right. Hey, Good Bill? stuff. Easter eggs, uh, caramel filled Easter eggs. All right. Excellent. Well, from Chocolate Chocolate, on the road with Brown and Brown. And next stop, well, you'll have to wait and see. And please keep tuned in, for goodness sakes. Don't change the channel. There's all kinds of exciting things to, to learn, OK? All right, from Brown and Brown, adios. Out and about. Hi, we're standing here right in front of Gateway Magnet High School, and this used to be O'Fallon Tech, and remember we had North County Tech where mm -hmm. we grew up in Spanish Lake, yep. and now here we are in the south, and uh, it's uh, Gateway Magnet High School. Home of the Jaguars. Hey. This is uh, where the best and brightest in the city of St. Louis come to matriculate. Yes. And you've got a, a great uh, location. It's right uh, by the hill. Just behind chocolate chocolate <laughs> and so it's a it's perfect uh, you know if I if I was here I'd probably weigh about 350 pounds so and they have, did you know they have about 1200 students here yeah that's yeah, a big it's, school it's and big it's school. also known for their EMT program their emergency medical oh, I didn't know the, that. the folks in the ambulances and uh, yeah it's a very very good school if you want to become uh, work uh, take people to the hospital and by ambulance this is a good place to go and um, a big shout out for the the Jeep and one thing I will say about um, uh, Gateway is their student population I mean like you said their, their graduation rate is very high which is always good and the students seem like they take a lot of care and they they do have a football team here too they do, right? a good one yeah they've won some uh, public high school championships so a big shout out to Gateway for all you, uh, what's the name of their team? The Jaguars. <laughs> the Jaguars, ah, I knew that. The Jags. Yeah, the Jags. Speaking of which, you can see my Jaguar in the parking lot here. So. Hey, I don't want one of these foreign cars polluting <laughs> our driveway, okay? Uh, it's, uh, By American. it's British, or, or they're allies, so. Actually, they always say, well, it was assembled in the United States, so it's an American car. No, it isn't, I mean, nah, you'd agree. Close enough. Close enough. What well, do you want? Well, I, I think. You want a Chevy? I got a GMC. GMC? They're, they're fine. Yeah. I want to want. You know what I do want to have is one of those driverless. What is it? Driverless cars. Tesla. No, I want. I, you know, I know there's been some horrible collisions and everything else. But think about it. Sit back. You're going to Kansas City. <laughs> listen to some like tunes. That. Relax. I think you got to actually sit there and watch. I don't think it just. Take a little nap along the way. But, uh, I think it'd be kind of neat. This is an auto drive on your 
GMC. You can't just push a button and go. Here's the situation, though. Remember, when cruise control came into play with automobiles, people were like, I'm never going to use it. I like using the accelerator, for goodness sakes. And even, like, the radio, downloading the radio back in the 1970s, you'd have to twist it. And then people say, I'm not going to press a button. Oh, my goodness, that's, that's too hard. And I'm like, well, we have to evolve. And let me say this. If the evolution says Dan Brown can get in a car, drive to Kansas City, take a little nap along the way, hey, I'm all for it. What can I say? <laughs> I like technology. I think I'd be terrified. Would you? Yeah, yeah. One, all it takes is one guy that doesn't know that you're, you have a driverless car. Look in there. There's nobody in there. And he <laughs> swerves right in front of you. He lounges back in the back. I had, to, I had to drive to Kansas City. And oh my gosh, that's a long drive. All the trucks, and they go, and they barely pass, and there's like yeah, 15 cars. Yeah. Oh man, I, I gotta tell you, drive. next time fly, for goodness sakes. I take the I bus, wanna... go to take the back the... of Greyhound. Well, that's not gonna kill you. You know, you took the bus to Chicago, didn't you? Took the bus to Chicago a lot. I took a bus home from California one time. Well, that, let's not talk about 48 that. 48 hours in a bus. <laughs> oh yeah. what, what was the bus like at the very end? I mean, was it a toilet? Uh, mom, a wanted, mom wanted to pay for a plane ticket. She well, said she'd pay for a bus ticket, but not a plane ticket. I don't blame her on that one. <laughs> what were you doing out in California anyway? Visiting stranded? a buddy over Christmas. Well, you knew you didn't have enough money to get back. I was going to hitchhike. Oh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, bad idea. I ended up in South Central L.A. with uh, just uh, no rides. Nobody's picking me up for some reason. Well, here's, what was the time that you hitchhiked from Thunder Bay, Canada? Nipigon, actually. Nipigon? Yeah, then and all one it, time from Florida, too. And then you're going through Chicago where that mass murderer was? Uh, yeah. What was Fortunately, it? Who yeah. was, was it? John, John Wayne, Wayne Gacy. Gacy. Yeah. Sheesh. Well, that was a... That was when he was in his prime, I guess. Yeah, good thing he didn't spot me. Quick story about that, John Wayne Gacy. So anyway, they, they executed the guy, and the guards did not like him. And what happened was they executed him very slowly. It took him like 45 minutes, and he was still conscious. And um, so whatever you do, if you commit capital crimes, <laughs> be nice to the guards so it's quick, I guess. I don't know. Well, uh, Dahmer, Jeffrey Dahmer, yeah. you know that story, right? Well, That's, his cellmate uh, killed him. Well, yeah, and they were so scared of him. He was the, the, the guy, the cannibal, uh, who ate his victims. Mm. They were so scared of him that when they did the autopsy, they had him handcuffed to the, <laughs> to the table. Yeah, they weren't going to take any chance that this guy was a him. zombie and come up off the table. <laughs> he's yeah. not dead yet. Yeah, they had his brain sitting in a pan, and he's still handcuffed to the table. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Well, and then there was Richard Speck, of course, who was a yeah. horrendous individual. Wow, how do we get on that. the subject anyway? I, yeah. I like to be lively and everything. We're talking about death and mass murders. Let's change the subject. Let's um, keep it light. Keep Gateway it light. tech. Gateway yeah. tech. If you got a kid, it's a good place to go. I agree. Yeah. From Brown on Brown, we're on the road. Where we're at next, nobody knows, but don't turn the channel, for goodness sakes. We're still here, even if it's in the middle of the night. And hello. If you've been hurt in an automobile accident, I probably know what you're thinking. Maybe I can deal with the insurance company on my own. But remember, the insurance company has a staff of professionals working for them. We're the attorneys of Brown and Brown. Don't be a victim twice. To get your car fixed right, obtain a rental car, and get compensated for your injuries, you should have us working for you. In Missouri, dial all threes, 333-3333. In Illinois, dial all eights, 888-8888. And a brown and brown, if you can't come to us, we'll come to you. Hi, we're here at the Grove, which is a very exciting, trendy part of St. Louis. It's uh, really come around in the last 10 years. Uh, there's a TV show shot here called Sweetie Pies, which is on the Oprah Network. And uh, good, really good uh, uh, soul food at Sweetie Pies. And they just opened Urban Chestnut, you can see behind us. That's uh, an urban brewery, a brew house where you can get a sandwich and a beer and Dan would enjoy that. He's he's a beer lover. Not an ale lover, though. No, he doesn't like ale. Oh. Just, uh, 
Just whenever the somebody, piece. when that person brought his bathtub concoction <laughs> up and made me drink it, I thought I was gonna be dying for sure. Anyway, so be it. But so, ah! so the area that we're at is right at Manchester and Kings Highway, which is just eh, about a mile from the Hill neighborhood, and. Uh, You've got uh, McCree Town. You've got uh, a little further down is Van de Venter. That's right. And a lot of new uh, restaurants. The Monocles here. Uh, Mc uh, McDougal's. Mc There's a, an Irish place right down the street. And um, McConnell's. The Mangrove. Mangrove oh, is. Oh, that's out of business. That went out of business. Yes, I believe. Okay. Oh, maybe not. Oh, I shouldn't say that. All of a sudden, no, we're not. I'll have a Atomic call. Cowboy. Yeah. Tommy right. Cowboys here. By the way, it's a nice, beautiful day, and it's a vibrant yeah. area. I mean, you can just come on down here, and there's no shortage of places to eat or uh, places to drink, that's for sure, especially with the Chestnut Brewery right here. You, do they brew their own beer? Or? They brew their own beer. All right, no yep. ale. I'm just I don't kidding. know about ale, but uh, <laughs> dark beer, if you like Pilsner, dark beer. Pilsner, lager, and that's about it. Now, I recall this, I went to school on Grand Avenue. That's a lot further down. In the 1950s, and this was residential, believe it or not. Residential, yeah. yes. People lived at the, these, all of them. The places around here were real houses, residential places. I did not know that. Now, that would only be less than a mile away from St. Louis University. Right, that's what I'm saying. All yeah. of this was residential. Yeah. And Bill, what are your uh, memories of the Grove? Or the, what are your thoughts on the Grove? Head on over to uh, the Chestnut. Maybe we'll uh, get a couple of beers later. Yeah. I understand that they've got really good food, too. That's it. Well, it's a beautiful day, and uh, the Grove is a happening place. Um, but I'm talking about myself, I, I go to bed at 9 o'clock or 9.30, so it's not happening for me because people don't even get started now until about 10.30, 11 o'clock, and Dan Brown's sound asleep by that time, I'll assure you of that. Ed Brown, the same way? Yeah, I'm not a late, uh, you know, I don't stay up that late anymore. Um, you know, I love to sleep. I, some people love a good meal, I love a good sleep, um, you know. It's, uh, I smile when I sleep because it's just kind of nice. But you could come here for dinner. It would be a nice place to come for yeah. dinner. The soul food. Yeah, a lot of people yeah. do come here for dinner. Yeah. It's a, it's a happening place. This is the place to be. They have a 24 hour do. diner down the street. Oh, they do? That's always good too. Yeah. Now, if I was still a law student at St. Louis University, I'd probably go and check out the diner. Yeah. But uh, we had one on the way home in Baden. You remember that one? The there was 20. one there, there was one on Grand, uh, the, city. the City Diner. The yes. City Diner. That's right. Okay. There's one on, uh, right by the Fox Theater, 24-7 uh, Diner. Well, you won't go hungry around here, <laughs> for sure. No. Well, this is Brown and Brown, and we are going to say goodbye to the Grove. I love the sign there and everything else. It's a happening place, <laughs> and if you have extra time and you can go to bed by Is there any place that's not a happening place for you? Oh, uh, yes. Baden. Yeah, I can't name anything because if I did, then all of a sudden I get some angry phone calls. This is a happening place. Um, <laughs> Depends on who you are. <laughs> it's kind of like a, a buddy of mine said, Dan, um, you should go on safari. And I said, why would I go on a safari? I can just go to the zoo for goodness sakes. <laughs> I don't have to go to some safari, you know, the wild kingdom, go out to Africa. And then he said, well, you get to, you have to have four shots. And I'm like, I'm not too keen on having shots. An uh, eight-year-old boy in me screams for pain. But one of the things I just learned is we got a good St. Louis Zoo here. We visited that before. And um, you know, just if you want to see animals, go to the zoo, for goodness sakes, right? No. You no. take pictures <laughs> in Africa and see the last remaining rhinoceros and elephants and giraffes. And, you know, that's... Yeah. They it's can't a, see that in a zoo. It's a different experience. Yeah, just, different experience. Yeah. Okay, so we've done it. We've been there. Okay, let's move on. Off Brown we go. Brown and Brown, on the road. Thanks for watching. And go, hello to everybody that always calls in and says hello. And they appreciate us somehow.
I appreciate that too. Be sure right. you watch. <laughs> Adios. Bye. Hi, and where else would we be but in front of Spanish Lake uh, Park? And we have a very special occasion. But first, if you watch any of our former infomercials, um, we actually climbed up on this. I think, was that 10 years ago or something like that? Mm, it probably was. More than that, I believe. But, but I could still do it if I wanted to. Yeah. But I don't want to. But we are here for a special reason and the, the, a special um, shout out for Mark Ollendorf and the St. Louis Parks Foundation. He made this all possible and we have our own fountain. We were, going, we're dedicating it today. And anytime you drive by Spanish Lake and you see the fountain, you can think of brown and brown. What do you think about that's that, right. Bob Brown? I think that's very good and I'm very proud mm -hmm. that um, all this is occurring. So uh, it's all um, because of hard work. That's right. When we moved to Spanish Lake uh, long ago, you never thought. Uh, 1965, no, no. That we'd have our own fountain. Our own fountain. And this is a lovely, <laughs> lovely spot. It the is. lake is sparkling mm -hmm. and it's just grand. Yeah, and as a kid, it was sheer heaven to explore all this, you know, just to walk around. And sure. There's railroad tracks. You go back that way. Um, there's another park, Sunfish uh, Lake is right down here. And the zoo is coming. So we're looking forward to uh, maybe seeing hippos and giraffes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a beautiful day here in um, Spanish Lake. And we're going to go someplace else. And that is we're going to take a look at the fountain. and. Let's see what it looks like. Uh, what do you think? I think we think? need a boat to get out there, but uh, I think we can see it from the edge. So, oh. Well, it's, it's a special day for Brown and Brown having her own fountain. And um, Mom, you have anything else to add before we go on down there and check it out? No, I'm eager to get down there and really see it. Mm -hmm. All right, next stop, the fountain. The fountain <laughs> of youth. Well, I don't know the fountain of youth, but a fountain of... Fountain of law we'll yeah, call there it. You go, there you go. the brown and brown fountain of law fountain of law right. fountain of legal knowledge but again a special shout out for mark ollendorf to make this uh happen and let's go check out our fountain we're sitting on a bench near the fountain that uh, we contributed funds to build in spanish lake and it's appropriate because we as kids would walk up here with our fishing poles and bait and where do we get that bait from oh we're over there uh by um yeah uh, um, bell, bell park Fa oh. bell park plaza across yeah, the street from there uh -huh. some, the bait shop the bait, the bait shop, shop. That's right. on they bell had, fountain road they had, uh, yeah. worms worms right yeah somebody dug up the worms and so we'd come <laughs> over here and we'd uh, put our lines in the water did we catch anything i caught a lot of fish here and but they used to have to they started charging two dollars, and two dollars in 1973 is a lot of money. And then they said, "Well, we're going to charge three dollars, but you get a dollar back at the end of the day." I don't know why they did it like that, but I figure we might as well dedicate the fountain because of all the times we didn't pay to go fishing. That we, you know, it's a yeah. big lake, and you know the park ranger would come by, and you just pick up your pole and go someplace else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you'd but, sneak in the back sometimes by the railroad track. Sure. Yeah, you'd come in that way. Now, what was it, in 1993, we had the big flood, and the, it was a fish kill. I mean, the entire lake, um, yeah. all the, the specimens in the lake died, and we went on over here. You remember that. You, you yeah, went with a friend shame. of mine. Yeah. I mean, there were some catfish, just huge yeah. catfish. And then I started thinking, I said, well, why don't we eat these? I mean, we could pluck them up, but then, you know, they're all bloated and everything. And I'm like, I'm not, I'm hungry, but not that hungry. You yeah. know, um, this is a naturally fed lake. Mm, that's true. Water-wise, there are springs under here. That, that's true. Mm -hmm. and it's it, called Spanish Lake because the Spanish soldiers right. uh, would ride their horses over mm -hmm. here. That's right. Those big Spanish horses. By Bell Fountain 
uh, Fort Bellefontaine, which is about two miles uh, down Bellefontaine Road from here. And that's how it got its name, Spanish Lake. And um, Can't you just see them on the horses? Yeah, right. Swash buckling mm -hmm. around Cavaliers, here. yes. Cavaliers. Mm -hmm. Cavaliers yes. coming through. Yeah. Hey, we, we'd have our um, Spanish Lake reunion every year right across the lake from here. And mm -hmm. we'd have a good turnout, usually about 100, 150 people. Yep. And it was good, to, it still is good, just to reminisce and you go and visit and you say, oh my goodness, I haven't seen you in 20 years. And mm -hmm. then you say, you catch up with a lot of people that you knew when um, we went to Twelman Elementary School and Kirby Junior High and, mm -hmm. and Hazelwood East. And it's always good to catch up. And so if there's any graduates, come on to the <laughs> reunion. It's gonna be, um, we have it every year. And anyway, it's, it's, it's a good time. At first you're like, who are these people? They look so old. <laughs> and all of a sudden, you know, you look in the mirror, well, heck, I'm getting old too. But good mommy, thing I haven't. You yeah. haven't, all right, Ed. You haven't, you haven't gotten old. Now also there's a path around the lake. That's see, true. You can see part of it here. And I have walked that whole Mm -hmm. area yep. all the way to the back and out here you have ball it, diamonds is that one on the hill 1.3 miles i believe mm -hmm. there's a sign up there that says that mm -hmm. and the tennis courts play tennis there all the time oh ed yes yeah. you've played a lot of tennis here mm -hmm. that's right yep in the uh, winter of 78 the lake froze was frozen and you can walk all all around the lake that was the, the you winter can of. Walk uh, across it. You could walk across it and everything else. And people were just, that's the only year I remember that. I'm, I'm sure there's other people out there, and you can call and say, well, in 73 it was frozen too, and back in 56 it was frozen, but unfortunately I wasn't alive then. Um, but no, it was, it was something else because we'd be jumping up and down, and but we were a lot lighter then. I mean, I was yeah. only weighed like 80 pounds at the yeah. time. But there's a lot of history to this lake, and it's a, it's a very relaxing environment. It really is. So if you ever want to come on down here, spend a little time, take a nice walk, it's, it's still here. I got to tell you, and it's, it's a, a pleasant, it's a pleasant location and a pleasant f fountain. So You'll when see you come, some deer, <laughs> a lot of deer. Oh, that's right? true. Deer, yeah. deer. But once you start out walking on the trek around, you stay on that trek. There's no return yes. <laughs> you go all the way around Make it sound like a zombie movie uh, well there's no other way you have to uh, be dedicated i think you to can walking. turn around and go back if you so, wanted to some people walk it every morning yeah i saw exercise. a lot of people walking dogs here and um yeah yeah, yeah it's just yeah. it's one of these uh environments it's off the radar for a lot of people so come on back and enjoy the and then you, it's, you can still fish here there's still a lot of fish mm -hmm. And mm. you have to say a word for St. Louis County, oh, yes. the Parks Department, they really keep it nice. If you've been hurt on a job, you probably realize by now you're not dealing with your employer, but rather with their insurance company. At Brown & Brown, we'll make sure you get the proper medical care, lost wages, and a lump sum settlement. At Brown & Brown, we've handled thousands of workers' compensation claims. So if you've been hurt on a job, call us. In Missouri, dial 333-3333. In Illinois, dial 888- 8888. And a brown and brown, if you can't come to us, we'll come to you. This is Sunfish Lake, which is right next to Spanish Lake, and another uh, spot with a lot of memories. As kids, we'd walk up here with our fishing poles and um, good news was when the uh, state would stock this with That's new true. fish, new <laughs> catfish, and we could come up here and we couldn't reel them in fast enough. we just pull them in one after another. But the thing about catfish, you have to remember is they have a big spike on the back. That's true. So when you pull them in, you had to grab them just right, otherwise that spike would end up right in your little child hands. And it wasn't, wasn't very pleasant, it hurt like hell actually. And you'd have to clean them and when you cleaned them you had yeah. to put, peel the skin Yeah, off they didn't the have catfish. scales. Catfish yes. have skin yes. so you have to grab it and peel the skin off 
And uh, yeah, we do that in the backyard, and it was a big mess. <laughs> I remember, I remember on, our, on our bathtub, <laughs> we do, do it in the bathtub. But um, yeah, a couple memories here. Um, a good friend of mine, Michael Berger, and I, we had one of those inflatable rafts where you had to pump it up. And then we just marked it on in there. We, we, we were paddling all around. And all of a sudden, some rangers yelling at us. And we're like, what? And he goes, do you have a permit for that? A floating device? I was like, we don't have any permits. What's the one? Uh, what, we don't need no stinking permits. <laughs> so anyway, you know, then he goes, you need to come in here right now. And we said, no, we're just going to float in. We just, we come just and get us, them. copper. Yeah. <laughs> Are you a good swimmer? <laughs> come and get us. And then finally, you know, they, we finally you know, um, parked our, our boat. And you would have thought they cost, caught Jesse James himself. I mean, it's, come on. I mean, we're 17 year old kids, but you know, he wants to show his authority. He probably was bored stiff because nothing would go on here. Now, if you go a little further that way and go up a, a road, uh, Laramore School is yes. right there. So. And we're going to be um, we're going to be visiting Lar Laramore School here in a little bit, and that's where my mom used to teach. Yeah, she did. She taught kindergarten. But you're right. You can get to the to Sunfish Lake through a road behind Laramore mm -hmm. School. That's right. Right by the uh, right. Ball Diamonds and. Um, people would dump trash back there. It was oh, that's right. nasty. They had washing machines and uh, old TV sets. And, and I, I, I should say also, uh, because this is such an old, old lake, uh, back in the 30s and 40s, the f uh, people fishing would throw their beer cans uh, in the woods. Mm -hmm. And that's guess right. what? I, I, Michael Evans and I and other people would go on out there and... Um, and find the old beer cans, and yeah. they'd be rusty, but what you could do is they had some like, is it muriatic acid or something like that, where you mm -hmm. could, it wouldn't take the, the paint off the cans. And uh, well, later on, uh, we're gonna show that where I found a whole bunch of the beer cans. <laughs> I, I shouldn't say, well, it was Cobank Road. Yeah, some of them were cone tops, right? Oh, I got a whole bunch of them, and um, I'm gonna maybe even dig and see if I can find some more. But that's, it. that's in another segment. For right now, it's a beautiful day out in St. Louis. And what else yeah, do you wish, have to say? I wish we had our fishing poles. No, that's true. <laughs> that's true. I take all this you know, suit stuff off and put on some shorts and a t-shirt. And we come out of here and we just uh, catch a few cat. Or get our floatable device going out there and yeah. have the park ranger yell at us again. That'd be nice. Stop, mm -hmm. you boys. Yep. But we're men now. I mean, we're not 17 yeah. anymore. All right, from Spanish Lake, I'm sorry, Sunfish Lake. And it, it's not. Sunfish Lake, right next to Spanish Lake. Yes. And we are departing and we're going to go someplace even better. Is there? Well, we'll find out. All right, don't change the channel. We'll still be here. All right. <laughs> 